Peace be upon you all and welcome to Resignology. I'm Aya and today we are talking about metaphors. What exactly are they and how can we use them in order to improve our English and sound more eloquent and sophisticated when we speak? Let's get started. So, metaphors, or if you are a native speaker of the Arabic language like me, you would probably know metaphors as al-kinayat, al-isti'arat, or al-majaz. So if you search the word metaphor online, you would probably find the following definition. It is a figure of speech in which a word or a phrase is applied to an object or action to which it is not literally applicable. In other words, a metaphor takes an object or an action and compares it to something that most people are familiar with, but this thing is not necessarily um, applicable or literally applicable, and sometimes it doesn't even make sense. But you might ask yourself, why do we use a metaphor if it doesn't make sense? Well, the answer to that question also answers the question of how can we use a metaphor in order to sound more eloquent and sophisticated in English? When we use metaphors, we are using something that is not direct. So you are making people think and you're engaging their thinking in the process of taking in whatever you said, which eventually makes your speech sound more sophisticated and eloquent. Okay, let's take some examples on metaphors. Say for example you heard the sentence Their love was a garden that grew over time. Their love was a garden that grew over time. Now you might ask yourself, how can love be a garden? Which is a very good question by the way, because love is not an actual garden. However, the two of them have something in common and that is they both start small and they grow with time if we take good care of them and that is the metaphor we use something that is not literally applicable to love which is garden which is a physical thing to describe something much more deeper about love and that is the fact that it is growing with time Okay, how about another example? Let's say the online course that he took has helped him bring his ideas to life. Again, the online course that he took has helped him bring his ideas to life. So do ideas actually die and come back to life? No, they don't. But again, we are saying something that is not applicable in this case in order to clarify or intensify another idea so what he wanted to say is that because of the online course that he took his ideas were able to come true or his ideas were applicable in real life and that is the power of a metaphor compare that to if the sentence was for example um, the online course that I took has helped me in my project. You see the difference? How powerful it became? Another place where metaphors are used commonly is in movies. And that's why I wanted to bring a case study in this video. And this case study is actually a documentary because I learn a lot of things in English through watching movies and documentaries. And for the sake of this video, I chose the documentary The Wolf Back. And this documentary follows the story of six siblings who were forced to live inside their apartment in Manhattan, New York, uh, almost their entire childhood because of their father's beliefs. It's a very interesting but disturbing documentary. If you haven't seen it and you're looking for something to see and learn English from, I would highly recommend it. Okay, let's watch this first clip from the documentary um, of one of the siblings who is explaining uh, how their upbringing was and how it has affected them emotionally and mentally. Um, try to listen carefully and see if you can catch the metaphor. Let's watch. 15 years old and I wasn't allowed to walk out my front door. I wasn't allowed to go in a specific room I felt like going in. 
I wasn't allowed to leave a room when I wanted to. If he put us in a room, we have to stay there until he says you can go. Dad was the only one that uh, had the keys to the front door. No one else, not even our mother, unless our mother went to an appointment or something that was an emergency. It's scary not having, having to want to break out of that that box. So we are back. Did you notice the metaphor? Towards the end, he said to want to have to break out of that box. To have to want to break out of that box. Break out of that box. So were they living in an actual box? The answer is no, they were not. But it shows how much restricted and present they felt because they were trapped in that place almost their entire life. And that's why it's more powerful than if he would have said, for example, wanting to break out of this house. So he used something that is not literally applicable. They did not live in an actual box. He used the box to show how much he felt present, how much he felt... Um, like a prisoner in his own house and that is the power of a metaphor okay let's watch the second clip of the documentary and come back we don't need the sun we are vampires <laughs> okay we are back so i think that one is kind of easy it's funny and it is sad at the same time so they he said um, we are we don't need the Sun we are vampires we don't need the Sun we are vampires so are they actually vampires again no they are not but he said that to refer to the fact that they lived inside almost all their life and that what vampires are known for in fantasy um, they stay inside during the day and come out uh, during night and that what he wanted to say or express okay guys so that's it for this video i hope that you have learned something about metaphors from it if you have any other sentences any other examples of metaphors that you have heard of or you have watched in movies or documentary um please feel free to leave them in the comment section below if you have seen the wolfpack documentary also let me know if you did if you haven't i highly recommend it um if you want to learn about metaphors and if you learn if you want to learn about english in general i just want to add one final thing metaphors are easily mistaken for similes and idioms not idiots, idioms. And that's why I want to dedicate a whole other video for the similarities and differences between idioms, similes, and metaphors. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Thank you all for watching. And until next time, keep recycling knowledge. I'll see you next time. Salam. So when we use, met when we use metaphors, when we use metaphors, we are actually using the blah, blah. This is my third or fourth time trying to record this video and <sighs> Hello, welcome to my life